got this feeling inside my bones. It goes electric, wavy when I turn it on. All through my city, all through my home. We're flying up, no ceiling when we in our zone. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. Ooh, I can't take my eyes off of it. Moving so phenomenally. You more like the way we rock it. So don't stop. everyone we just want to thank you for tuning in to speak out now it's our this is our podcast and this month is women awareness month and today we have carolyn boyd on the line with us today and she is here to we're going to discuss um a whole bunch of stuff about women issues and um our relationships we're going to talk about um business because she is a businesswoman. We're also going to talk about um, her faith walk with God and then also um, whatever else that comes across the table that we're going to talk about. And so, Carolyn, can you introduce yourself to everyone? Hi, everyone. My name is Carolyn. Um, I currently work in healthcare, I'm a health clinician. Also, I have a side business. I do gourmet bunt cakes. Um, so I am definitely excited to be on the podcast today to tell my story, to tell my testimony, and discuss everything with y'all. Awesome, awesome. So now, talk talk to us first about the bun cakes. How are they? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the bun cakes are really, really delicious. I get lots of reviews. Um, I do like mini gourmet bun cakes and also some whole big, large ones as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really try to like, it's kind of similar to nothing but cakes, but I really don't try to re- reproduce their flavors. I make my own. Some of my top sellers are the peach copper cupcakes. Mm. Um, I'd start a strawberry swirl cupcake. I mean, I'm sorry, bunt cake, sorry. So it's peach copper bunt cake and a strawberry swirl bunt cake um, have been some of my top sellers recently. And okay. I do a strawberry one as well, a regular story by itself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the bun cakes um, are pretty much it's mostly online. That's where most of my orders come in and um, online and word of mouth. So it's really amazing. It's really awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So how did you get involved in making bun cakes? Okay, so the first story is, is actually funny. Um, somebody asked me how did I get started baking. Mm-hmm. And so I first started baking, I love Sakatumi cakes. So back oh. when I- Yes. Yeah, and I can make that mm-hmm. one too. too. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's my very first cake I actually sold. Mm-hmm. But yes, um, my grandmother used to make them and my auntie used to make them as well. And so I used to always request them. And you know how grandmothers are like, okay, you request it, they'll make it. My mm-hmm. auntie was like, she would make it. And one day she was like, come to the kitchen, I'm going to teach you how to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's like, that was like in college. I must have been like 18 or 19. She was like, come mm-hmm. to the kitchen. So she taught me, that was the very first thing I ever baked, the mm-hmm. very first dessert. So she taught me how to do sakatimi cake. And then mm-hmm. from there, I just, I just continued doing it because like, I really, really liked it. Um, I, to me, sakatimi cake is a complex cake. And I was like, if, after the other cakes I baked, I'm like, they were easier than sakatimi. Mm-hmm. So what happens, one day I had ordered a, a lemon bun cake for somebody mm-hmm. and I tasted the lemon bun cake and it was just a little too lemony taste, I would say, not mm-hmm. similar to like our homemade lemon pound cakes right from there that's when i decided to start baking i'm like let me go ahead and start baking bun cakes and start putting in my own spin of flavors mm-hmm. and um yeah started that last summer and it's still going strong like awesome. still, yes that's good. that's good that's good so so um so would you encourage i know like having a grandmother or aunt uh, an, uh, I don't want to say an older, but it's more seasoned woman in your life to show you those those kind of trades. Do you think it was beneficial for you? I I really do. My aunt is like she's tripping, she's laughing at me because you know because she's like that's your story how you got started. I was like yes, it was you. <laughs> right, right, right. So right. I, I think it's very beneficial because um. You know, like there's there's certain traditions that they have and certain recipes that they have that 
are key, you know, to, to coming out really good and really tasty. And there's certain little secrets, you know, how to doctor certain things up. So just to have that influence on how to do cooking and baking. And my, both my grandmothers are, are deceased, all my grandmothers at right actually. But just to know that, you know, I started a business based on them. Like there's some of their, their recipes, some of their likings, what they taught me, what they were, like, you know, it does. Actually pretty impeccable, amazing to think about it. Awesome. And so what about, so like when you guys are in the kitchen cooking and she's teaching you how to cook, what, what conversations do you guys have? Because I'm thinking about soul food, you know, the movie soul food, when everybody's around the kitchen, you're cooking, you're talking. Because I remember a time when I'm with my sisters and my family and we're all in the kitchen, everybody got this special part that they're doing and they're making, we're laughing and talking about things that's happening. A fight never broke out. But we did laugh and talk and have fun. So what type of conversations did they give you? What kind of words of wisdom that they share with you? Oh, words of wisdom. My family, when we were actually when we were cooking together, they're more or less, uh, the words of wisdom, it's like the recipes rather. They're mm -hmm. more like put this amount of salt, don't overcook this, put the fire here, so forth. Uh, my family's very religious and spiritual. So anytime we were in the kitchen, a lot of, a lot of like Christian uh, topics came up. Mm -hmm. They talk about scripture, um, you know, church, good church events that are coming up. Mm -hmm. um, different yeah different scriptures are ministered to you how to deal with the situation that's coming up so that would be a lot of our our topics or we were seeing my grandmother used to love singing her uh favorite church hymns i call them old negro hymns but. right right what was her favorite one <laughs> amazing grace was one of them oh yeah that's a good one that's a good one that's a good one and since any and that's a good segue to go into when we talk about faith and so so your family, you say, was uh, very religious, um, um, Christ-centered. Yes. Right? So how does that affect you now, since you're older? Not say older, but you know, you're more. I'm a little. I'm a little. Yeah. <laughs> so how does that, from what they've taught you, and to now, and like some of the experience that you've gone through in your life, you know, did it help Ooh. you? Yeah. You know, um, honestly, uh, what I would honestly say from my experience, um, my faith walk has been definitely been a journey, um, every journey. The most important thing I would say for anybody is to discover Christ for yourself, you know, not just what you were traditionally taught. So I'll, I'll give a little bit of my background. I was actually raised Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. So that was my background. And I'm gonna be honest with you when I was, I was, I'm raised in another city. So um, when I got to the age like 18, because um, we went to like a small, like it's a family oriented church, like both my mom's side, and my dad's side went to that church, they were divorced, but we went to the same church. Um, and like, there was like a lot of like, there was no other families that are there we were kind of intermingled. We were all kind of related. We weren't related by blood, we were related by marriage per se. Mm -hmm. So we came up in the same church, the same teachings, and it was really great. And then in my high school year, my grandfather, who I was living with, so my mom was a single mom of four kids. We lived with my grandfather and my grandmother, he got his own church. So I became like a PK or a PGK, preacher's mm -hmm. grandkid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I know what that's like. Well, right, right, right. So, um, to be in a pastoral home, you know, there's you, you have to hold certain standards, certain who, certain mm -hmm. boundary, just can't do anything. So uh, I think when I turned 18, when I started to go to college, I was like, okay, y'all, like the church of God in Christ, y'all know it can be very strict. I think most people know, um, mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't wear, you couldn't wear pants back then, you couldn't wear makeup, no big earrings, so open toes, shoes, whatever. Right. So I used to look at, there was a Baptist church across the street. They used to be able to do that stuff. And I used mm -hmm. to like be like, why can't we go there? Because they're, you know, they're more lenient. Right, they got right. more before we did and so mm -hmm. forth. So when I got 18, I wanted to lead a church of God in Christ. And one of my family members uh, had kind of gave me a little threat. If I left the church of God in Christ, they were going to kind of disown me. Really? Yeah. Why? Church, Why is that? Uh, they were, it was very, the, the church of God in Christ, I think it was, it was a very strong, uh, I think I would say strong conditioning. I wouldn't down talk it. It, it, it meant well, and it had their teachings, right, right. but um, I guess while I was still under with my family, I had to stay Church of God of Christ. So of course, while I lived in my hometown, I still did Church of God of Christ. When I moved up here to Houston, I left the Church of God in Christ. I chose non-denominational for my own self. Mm -hmm. And that's when I began my spiritual journey um, based on what I knew, not based on what 
mom just said, dad said, grandma, grandpa, based mm -hmm. on my own spiritual journey. And, and I was telling you by that, you need that because you need their own development. So I read mm -hmm. the Bible for myself. I studied it for myself. Mind you, that's nothing too. When I graduated from college, my great grandmother gave me a Bible for my graduation gift. So to study and to learn and to grow from there on my own, that was right. the best. That was, that, was, that was liberating right there. Right, right, right. And and I, I do understand where you're coming from because I was raised also PK, um, mm -hmm. a preacher's kid. And so um, we, um, and the church I came from was um, holiness, you know, Pentecostal. And you couldn't wear the pants, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that, all the things that you couldn't do. And mm -hmm. so it was like, um, and then like, if you did something, you was always going to hell. <laughs> or something I'm like dang I'm going to hear for a whole bunch of stuff so, right like you said you know um once I left home and I came to Houston I um became non-denomination you know I tried the Baptist I tried this tried that but I said the closest one to what I'm used to was non-denomination and so that's what I stuck with and I've been there all all along um I love going to um um, the Church of God in Christ, you know, full gospel meetings and things like that. But, um, and I still love the way I was brought up. The way I was brought up to me was my foundation. Like with you, you had a foundation. Some people don't have a foundation. So you know what to, you know, uh, what your beliefs are. At least you understand the word, you know what I'm saying? The word of God. And a lot of times okay. people don't have anything to fall back on. And so that's a plus. So we can't really knock all of the mm. stuff that you know no. uh, we experienced. I trust me, it was a major experience, especially when you were young. All yeah. things you, you couldn't go swimming. They said if you go swimming, you got to wear a long dress. I said, "Well, I'm wearing a long skirt when I'm going swimming." They're trying to kill me. So you know, you know that skirt wrapped around your leg, and you trying to swim. Oh no, I'm not doing. That. <laughs> so it was just a lot of crazy. So you couldn't wear swimsuits. You couldn't wear the pants. You know, and but one thing about my mom that I appreciated, she allowed us to grow up you know to do some some of those things that they said that we couldn't do but like you said when you get older you read the word for yourself you know and then like and then like you develop that personal relationship with god for yourself and then you have that personal journey where you find out everything they said is not going to send you to hell mm -mm, mm -mm. you know it's not gonna you're not gonna bust why hell wide open and like boom i made it you know but it's just it's the opposite it's just I, it's like having that balance now in your life you know as a person so i know what i shouldn't do because something inside of me is telling me don't do that but All the right. other side is saying you need to do this you know what i'm saying so it's it's really interesting and so unique so um where do you find yourself at right now at this moment with your walk? Oh, at my walk at this moment, I would say is very strong. I would say it's um pretty much like intermediate. I always say this is an ongoing journey. Mm -hmm. The final mm -hmm. destination is going to be heaven upon mm -hmm. death. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, but one thing I was just having this conversation with a friend recently is about fasting. Um when I was back home, when I was younger, they really, my family fast, the adults would, but they never really put it on us. Mm. So I really understand. Yeah. I didn't have to really fast or they didn't really make us do that because we were a child. So mm -hmm. I didn't start fasting until I got into the church I'm with now. Mm -hmm. um, I started fasting and that's an interesting story too, because my very first time I fasted, it was like for Lent season. Mm -hmm. um, we would do the six to 12, okay. correct. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually passed out the first time that's my very first time fasting i didn't make it a day 40. <laughs> like it was actually kind of embarrassing so i was at actually beauty salon i passed out uh -huh, uh -huh. fasting between six and twelve so okay. um the doctor took you know took me off that fast now I, I was disappointed because I'm, I'm very i'm very like i guess how do you say uh overachiever i'm like i'm yeah, trying to make it yeah, 40. Yeah. It's, i'm like somewhere day 24 25 i passed out I end up in the doctor's office it's not good that look but and then what it's like, I tried it. Using stubborn me, try it next time. And I think I just I think I just curtail and detail it better. But I do mm -hmm. better now with fasting. So my longest mm -hmm. fast has been forty eight hours of a water. Okay, fasting. okay, okay. So that, I feel like my walk has gotten stronger. So the mm -hmm. fasting, um, I do de morning devotional every day, okay. morning every day. So that mm -hmm. really helps me to handle my day. Mm -hmm. And so with the morning devotional, um. So it gives you that balance during the day, makes you 
you know, more smooth, more, how, how's your day going when you do morning devotion? Because some people don't believe in doing devotionals in the morning time. They just get up and just go. You know, it's, a, ooh, it's a each every one, but they say like, one of the things they say is like successful people meditate in the morning. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say too, like, um, when you get up in the morning and you do your devotional, you're, you're giving your day to God. So whatever comes your way, because Lord knows I work in, you know, I work in healthcare, anything can come your way. Mm -hmm. It's already given to God. It's, it's already surrendered, submitted unto him. So mm -hmm. whatever happens, I'm more calm and collected and accepted of that reaction of what's going to come. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you, if you got to get up a little earlier to, to make it, make that time, if you can make it up earlier, if you can sit in your car, some days I come to work early, I stay in the car and do it right before I walk off to, you know, work, whatever. Um, just but every day, I, I think it's a very important concept to add to your schedule. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, 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 I do believe that devotion is, is, is really important. I think it, it sets the tone. Yes. It sets the tone for you for that day. And sometimes if you forget about it, not everybody's into devotional, not every, and everyone is into reading the word or reading the scripture or reading something inspirational or praying. But whoever you pray to, if, I hope, you know, to God, that um, everything works out for you, because to me, it sets the tone of my day, how things are going to go for me, you know, my flow for that moment. And so I want to talk about relationships. Yay, relationships. But relationships with a person. I already know we already know about your relationship with God. So um relationships. How do you uh, are are you married or single? I am not married. I am single. No okay. kid, no husband. Okay. But I was I was in a long term relationship for 13 years with my high school sweetheart. We were okay. engaged. Okay. So. Okay, okay, okay. And so um, do you, we talked on, I, I've talked to some other ladies about the word submission. Mm -hmm. And so I, as a single person, I was the only single person on the line. So you, you, you know, you left me hanging. So, um, <laughs> I need to, <laughs> so I need to know, what is your take on the word submission? Is submission hard for you if you were to be in a relationship again, or do you think that you submit only to your husband or the person that you in a relationship with? What, are your, what is your take on that? So I actually, I'll, I'll give you the key. I actually kind of caught some of the interview and back to look at it and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I saw the in, uh, the submission conversation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give my piece about submission. Mm -hmm. I have no problem submitting until a man, a husband, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, let me throw out some concepts and this is going to be some free game for y'all. Mm -hmm. Submission, from, in order for me or I think a woman, a very strong, independent woman to mm -hmm. submit to a man, mm -hmm. it depends on his competency, mm -hmm. his maturity, mm -hmm. his decision-making skills mm -hmm. are very important. His mm -hmm. morale, his character, his integrity, okay? Mm -hmm. That is free game. To me, all that has to be checked off before I submit. Mm -hmm. all that competency is so key decision making skills is mm -hmm. so maturity i mean all of that morale character mm -hmm. integrity okay mm -hmm. and spirituality and the thing is like here's the thing we'll go about submission we know in, in spirituality and christianity you know we submit to god mm -hmm. if you look at god god has all the right characteristics mm -hmm. all of them he's perfect he's perfect you know mm -hmm. so that's why we submit unto god and the man should submit unto God, we just manage him, mm -hmm. but I can't submit to someone who makes bad decision-making skills. You know, you're going to use, like, let's say we're married and you take our money, our electricity and water bill money, and you go gamble it away. Mm -hmm. Or you're, you know, someone who's immature, who wants to go do something like adventurous, wants us to jump off I-45, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's some, some decisions, <laughs> like, yes, I mean, something crazy, think about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. you want us to like go dive in the bayou like just you know it's just your decision making skills how you handle mm -hmm. situations how you handle yourself the temperament is everything so that's what mm -hmm. i'm gonna say about submission. when if a man can check off most of those all of those mm -hmm. i could do it okay okay so um a part of a relationship how what about if a, if he's a little bit too aggressive and you're getting ready to date someone that's aggressive what type of characteristics should a, a person have when you get ready to date them oh i like i like a calm temperament um mm -hmm. calamity sets the tone for mm -hmm. safety for me 
Mm -hmm. um, so anything that comes the way, how a man reacts to it. It goes back to maturity as well as competency, but the calamity. The aggression to me is very much a uh, turn off. I'm not attracted to that. So aggression could lead to further different things. Right. I'm very I'm a deep thinker and I'm a forward thinker. So I'm looking at you how you act and observe certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. And if I see a behavior that could be like a red flag or be a warning of some sort. Right. I start to act, react accordingly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, I know that um, on last night, I believe, the night before last, we talked about, um, you know, the submission part. And some women didn't have a problem with the submission part because, you know, like I was, like I was sharing with them is that submission to me should be so easygoing. You know, if I feel comfort and peace with you, it's not hard for me or whomever to submit, you know, if you have the respect and you know, uh, you have all the characteristics like you mentioned before, um, that I'm looking for, then submission not, should not be a problem. It's not like you beat submission into a person, it should be free flowing, you know what right. I'm saying, free flowing. So, um, uh, and no relationship is perfect. You know what I'm saying? There's always some ups and downs. Have you uh, ever been in a relationship that was sort of toxic? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. This is what yeah. happened? Would you like to share? Of course I would share. This relationship mm -hmm. uh, was very toxic. Very toxic. Mm -hmm. It was um, a very different situation. He wasn't a normal, my normal type. Um, definitely had a troubled background troubled class uh a few baby mamas um a criminal record so a little bit different and mm -hmm. i later found out that he actually had a history of abuse to women i found mm -hmm. out afterwards so the situation there were there was definitely red flags that were inside the relationship um there were times that nighttime i couldn't reach him the guy would call, he wouldn't answer the phone. He would claim he was asleep. And there was times he would be gone too. Like one day he was like, oh, I'm gonna go drop off my phone to get fixed. They're gonna keep it from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how many people, phone places actually take that long. Most of those places you'll be done in an hour or two. There was, uh, during that time, this person had cussed me out one time. He got upset, really aggressive. Uh, he called me a B. It was the first time I ever dated someone who called me outside of my name. Right, right, right. And then later on, that relationship did end based on the assault. Um, he finally put, he did, did put his hands on me. The aggression was there and it was starting to build up. And after the first time he called me a B, I was like, okay, this is it. Um, the only way we can work it out, you go to counseling. He claimed he went to counseling. He was doing better. So we tried to rec be reconciled and then the assault came later. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the smart me should have left when mm -hmm. I was, or he was verbally aggressive that mm -hmm. one time. Exactly. I should, yes. And I, I look back, I look at all the mistakes and you, you feel down on yourself because mm -hmm. you know better. I mean, I knew way better. Um, but there was some like, oh, I'm gonna do better. Oh, I'm going to counseling, I'm working, the little con lies and schemes mm -hmm. and then, when that last part, I was like, this is it. There's mm -hmm. just no returning at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. And that was a very, very, very short relationship. It was only like five months. Wow. But that was long enough. Toxic. That'd be toxic with capital mm -hmm. letters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and so how are you doing from that situation? You, do I'm doing much better. I worked on healing. That actually from that situation, um, you do hit like when you're working on your healing, you, it was an all time low. Mm -hmm. The reason it was all low, I've, I was a product of domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. I've seen my mom, my parents, and then to become a victim myself is very okay. hard because that was always one of my things and I never wanted to be a victim. So um, with the healing, uh, I did like, a lot of healing, a lot of talking things out, started writing out poetry about my situation. Mm -hmm. And um, to, just to say the least that I feel better now than where I was mm -hmm. at the end of that because it was it was a very low point yeah. very much yeah. do you have that poem you sent me yes okay. the poem. yeah the poetry yeah, yeah the, the violence one 
Yeah, yeah. you have it. So you have it mm -hmm. nearby. It's um on the phone, yeah. Oh, so you can't do it because you on the phone, right? Yeah, I put on my notes. On the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, because I really want you to do that one. I, th I thought it was a really, really nice one. Yeah, it was. You know, that yeah. point came to me. I was driving to work and I just started, I thought about it and I pulled over to the side and started typing it out. That's why it's, that's mm -hmm. why it's on the phone. So, and I want to throw a little, that way I want to make it more lyrical, throw a little beat to it, but domestic okay. violence. Yeah. Um, I have it. Can I read it? You can, you can, but tell, it's a preliminary, y'all. So some of the little verbiage might be a little off. I'm gonna clean it up, just make sure to make that clear, but yes. This is her original draft. Okay, yes. so if anybody have any comments, you could just email me at Houston Speak. Um, at, no, Houston Speak at gmail.com. You could email me. But we're not going to judge you. This is your original piece. And it says, let's talk about domestic violence. So many people suffer in silence. The fear of abuse reveal or telling people how you really feel. Sometimes people skip a meal cause they're, cause they're trying to heal. Not sure what's going on as the abuse happens too long and the escape a, a option is prolonged. If they attempt to escape, people may believe the claim is fake. Because you always hide your face and never discuss the violence by rape. Now you're just unaware. Is this serious or a minor scare? People should self prepare. Domestic violence happens everywhere. Some days you're so in love, showered by kisses and hugs. Another day they're high and buzz, victim of being hit, pushed and shoved. Turns into a regular fight, turn into regular fights. Sometimes happens every night. You sneak a you sneak to attempt to book a flight. Now the abuser begins to apologize. This is good. Mm -hmm. How we go. How here we go with another round. My self wealth really needs to be found. Looking for answers with more solid ground before I return to feeling sad, sad and down. Should I take all my babies if I leave? Would they hate? Would they hate me? But what about maybe if I say, if I stay, who will save me? Yes, indeed. Yay. That was yes. nice. That was nice. And when you sent that to me, I said, yeah, she's going to say that again. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And so um, just knowing just even five months is enough time to say um, that's just too long, you know, um, I, I really feel as though and I could be wrong. You could correct me. Somebody could correct me. But um, people look for a certain type of people um, that they attach themselves to um, when it comes to abuse, you know, um, and, and these type of people wear a mini mask, you know, and so whatever you're looking for at that moment, that's the mask that they have on. And so we begin to um, uh, uh, we begin to um, pull towards that person, we go, we draw to that type of personality. And then once they got us, you know, they we they have us in their in their hands, and we feel comfortable. And they say, "Oh, she's comfortable. He's comfortable now." So now it's like I'm gonna really just peel off the layers that are inside me. And when they peel off those layers, you're gonna say, "Oh my God, what the, what the heck is this?" You know, and it's like really scary. And and I, I anytime a person go through it just for one second, one moment five months, five days, whatever the number is, you know, my heart goes out to you because no one should have to suffer because we were not created to be punching bags, um, um, uh, abused or talked down to or isolated, mishandled, mistreated, um, belittled. We, we, we wasn't created to be that way. 
and not just women go through it, men go through it and teenagers, they go, they, everybody experiences it. And that's one thing about uh, Speak Out, our, our campaign is to teach people to speak out. And so let them know these are the signs that you should look for and that um, you are loved, you know, and that you don't have to accept that, but know that you are loved because you have to love yourself first before mm -hmm. someone else could come into your space. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah. never, and I'm glad, I, I'm glad you learned that now, you know, now you know what to look for. You know what I'm saying? You have yeah. to really sit back and watch people, mannerisms and everything, you know, because people give you false hope. <laughs> yeah. You know, false hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was telling, I was actually just talking to a coworker like recently this week and I was like, there's like five things um, people should like work on. Like when you're like mentally healthy, mm -hmm. like if you're, if you're healthy in all the areas, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, and spiritually, mm -hmm. you would be like, I think you attract better, like at a higher frequency, a higher vibe, mm -hmm. and that you make better decisions because mm -hmm. you won't settle for certain things. Right. So make right. sure people are healthy in those areas. And then lastly, I would say too, um, one of the red flags is like, if they love bomb too quick at the beginning, mm -hmm. I learned that is a red flag. That's a mm -hmm. that's actually a, a serial like a, a typical um, sign from a narcissist. At the very mm -hmm. beginning, they love bomb. They shower you with everything so quickly, and that yes. was one thing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't I wasn't really I, actually I didn't even know narcissist or personality. I really understand it, mm -hmm. um, but that was one of the signs, and that happened very much at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. We were like showered so fast. Mm -hmm. And, and 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 it's scary when a, when a person says, um, "I love you." I'm like, "You just got to know me. What's going on?" You, you, right. I, you know, I could be the crazy one, and not you. So, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can see bipolar. I love you. Yeah, okay. no, you don't know me. Uh -uh, you don't know. And then all of a sudden, here's my credit card, or or here's the keys to my car, and they start giving you their possessions, and I'm like, you don't know me. You know, exactly. don't do that. Yeah, and that's what happened to me um, in the five year relationship that I was in, is that um, I was telling my sister about. It. I said, oh, he gave me his um, his the keys to his truck. They said, why? I said, mm, he just told me he had to take it. I was like, okay, I just left the keys on the counter and I didn't do anything with it. And the next thing is like, um, here's the keys to my, my, my place. I said, already? You ain't getting the key to mine, but okay. <laughs> right. I said, I said, I was like, well, maybe he'll get locked out. Maybe he's the type of person that um, he um, loses keys all the time. And so, you know, that kind of thing. So I said, okay, I'll hold on to it for you. The next thing was to check. Hmm. He said, yeah, and I said, okay, he's moving too fast. I said, I don't know, you know, but the he was still loving and so kind and church going and, you know, God fearing. And then once I start seeing that part, that part drew me mm -hmm. because I was that into God. So the enemy knows where the, where he could pull on you at, you know what I'm saying? And so it was so funny. So we said, uh, let's get married. I said, okay. So got the ring. He said, well, okay, let's get the hot, let's get the place together. So we moved in together. So once I, we moved in together and I started seeing, it took me two years to do that. And then I started saying, I said, wait a minute, this is not what I signed up for. And this isn't what I thought it was going to be like. You know, mm -hmm. they had the good job, good intelligence, you know, good. Everything was just great except for that one addiction. Mm -hmm. And so that one addiction turned to another addiction. And then you think that you're the savior of the world. And then you realize you can't save a person who don't want to be saved. Mm -hmm. So then you become the punching bag, the, um, you know, all kinds of names and everything else. And then. Your, your self-esteem is already at a at a midpoint and then you get with this you're going down you're not going up you're going down so i do understand i do understand every woman every man every child that's gone through abuse i do understand so um uh, but you said your parents went through abuse as well my mom so mom did yeah your uh, mom did. okay but not with your dad Yes, yeah, she did. Oh, okay, okay, okay. My, my dad, because uh, he said when parents with the abusive, my mom was, my dad was abusive. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
when we lived, when my parents were together, we really didn't see it. But afterwards, okay. I would see him do things like he would come to my grandmother's house. I say he needed to talk to her like about something, whatever. And then he just like, you know, would start doing things to her. Mm -hmm. So I was like six, seven, eight. I was very young and I see that it was weird at that point. So right, right, right. Okay. Mm. So, so it does affect children as well. And people don't realize that, you know, even though kids don't say much when they're young, um, but they see the reaction and it does affect them. And so mm -hmm. we have to, and they think sometimes we think, oh, the kid is asleep, the kid's not home, but sometimes the children are around looking, you know how we are when you're young, you just nosy, you know, go to your room, mind your business, you know, that kind of thing. But <laughs> If we're here and fussing and fighting, we're going to look and see what's going on. You know, we, we, we're going to do that. So um, do you have any lasting words you would like to share with us, Mia? Sure. OK, so definitely, I think I said most of them. Your self, self-worth is definitely most importantly. Mm -hmm. Make sure you are healthy in all the areas I spoke of earlier. Mm -hmm. um, if, uh, and then, you know, one thing I was going to say, there's a statistic I read recently that People, when people that are in uh, abusive relationships, they don't usually leave right away. It's usually mm -hmm. after somewhere between number five to seven before they leave. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very more proactive. I say one to two is more ideal. Just mm -hmm. go ahead and leave at that time. Because typically, if it happens once, I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but it's a strong chance it can happen again. A very strong chance. Because if he hits you once, he's going to hit you again. Because he, you let him know that you know, even though you hit me, I'm staying. So he feels as though he could keep doing it. So the first hit, the first disrespect, you need to go. Exactly. Because you don't know what's next. You know, you just don't know. But I just want to thank you, Carolyn, for um, coming on today. And I can't wait for my butt cakes. It's coming, it's coming, sweetness. Um, Yay. So <laughs> we have, um, we're going to be at your radio station. Um, on the 26th, March 26th? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. And I come on the show on RaiseToPraise100.com. You can yes. log on RaiseToPraise100.com or download the app to hear, definitely. Okay, repeat it one more time, please. So RaiseToPraise100.com is our online website. Mm -hmm. And uh, the app is also Raise the Praise 100 I got the mic show plays on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So it's very funny, it's comical, clean, mm -hmm. spirited, fun. Y'all will be there on March 26th for your interview at 11 o'clock. We are super excited to have y'all yes, back. Yes, we are going to have fun. And I can't wait. And then when I walked through the door the first time, I said, I know him. <laughs> so so Mike was like, Ike was said, up, hey, Cheryl. I said, I knew it. I know him. You know, so. <laughs> But he's a cool, he's, he's, he was, I don't know if he's still doing comedy, but he's a wow. comedian. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a comedian. And so he's an excellent um, comedian. And um, and the whole show that we was on the last time was a lot of fun because the other guy, I can't remember his name, he's going to kill me. What's the other guy's name? Judge Mathis Jones. Oh, yes, I could. Okay, Judge Mathis Jones. He yeah. is hilarious. He is so hilarious. And so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all you guys together make a really great team. And so we're excited. I think we have uh, six or seven people that's going to be there on okay. the 26th. So far, we, that's how many we have, six or seven. So um, um, I'm looking at some more people that say yes. So we might have 12. So awesome. uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, we're, uh, there's crazy people in the group. Uh, that's <laughs> hilarious, you know. <laughs> we're just going to be crap. We just, I'm like, oh, my God. So I'm gonna make sure I have me some tissue. So cause I'm gonna be crying. I'm gonna be laughing and crying at the same time. So yes. Yes. can I wait? Yes. And thank you so much and um for uh, participating. And um Carolyn is in our skit that we're putting together for that's coming out. And then also she doesn't know yet, but I want her to be in this uh short film that I'm writing. So um, I have a couple of things I have in mind for Carolyn to do because um, we just, we're just going to make it happen. So, uh, <laughs> okay. And so I want you guys, uh, thank you for tuning in uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, please hit the like, share, um, notification button, uh, make your comments. And um, thank you for tuning in to our podcast. 
and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, sweetie. Uh-huh. Hey, this is what you're not going to do. You're not going to school, and you're not going to work. You're going to stay in this house, and you're going to take care of me. You hear me? Having heard all of the evidence today. So keep your ass in the kitchen and keep the stuff ready. The court finds that the state has proved beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant has committed criminal homicide. Therefore judged and decreed that the defendant is found. Oh, oh, oh.